Blue Math. Today we're going to look at lesson, in this case we're doing lesson nine, uh, spheres in proportion. Um, so we're going to talk about proportions of things. First you need to think kind of in conceptually what we're looking at. We're looking at the a sphere, but the first measurement we need is a radius or a diameter, and that's just a linear measurement. Okay, the second dimension would go to the surface area, the outside of a sphere, which is the area, surface area, and that area is always squared. It's length times width, right, for a two-dimensional figure. And then volume. Volume is three-dimensional. It's talking about the air and the space inside. So now we're talking three dimensions. And you need to understand that relationship between linear area and volume to be able to understand the concept of these relationships. Okay, so if our radius or our diameter, if the linear measurement is x, then we would have to square that, have a squared relationship for the area, and we'd have to have a cubed relationship for the volume. So let's just say that we had two different spheres. One had a radius of 1, and one had a radius of 3. Well, it's three times larger as far as the linear relationship. But what would happen to its surface area? Well, what we would do is we would take this ratio and we would square it to find the ratio of the areas. So we would take one squared and we would take three squared. That means the, the area, the relationship of the areas would be a one to nine. So the outside of the larger one would actually have a surface area nine times larger than the small one. Okay, what would happen to the volumes though? We would have to cube this relationship. So we go back to this linear relationship and we cube them to find the relationship of the volumes. So if we cube one, we get one. If we cube three, we get 27. So that means the volume of the sphere, the two spheres with a one to three relationship of the radius and diameter would have a 1 to 27 relationship in the volume. So the volume would be 27 times larger in the bigger one. Okay, so let's look at a couple more examples. What if we had a ratio of 2 to 5? So it could be like a, a length of 2 and then a length of 5, or it could be length of 4 and 10, but just as long as the ratio was 2 to 5. What's the ratio of the areas? Well, again, take the relationship and square it. So square 2 and square 5, that would be 4 to 25. So it would have a 4 to 25 area relationship. Well, what would happen to the volume? We'll go back to the linear measurement and let's cube it. Well, 2 cubed is 8 and 5 cubed is 125. So that would be the relationship of the volumes, 8 to 125. Okay, what happens if we're giving you the area relationship? What are the linear relationship and the volumes relationship? Well, let's see. We always have to work back and compare the linears first. So 5 to 36, since that's area, we would square root it. So take the square root of those, and that would give us 5 to 6 relationship. That's the linear relationship or the, the radius and diameters relationship. One might be 5 and the other might be 6 or 10 and 12, as long as that ratio is 5 to 6. Now, what's going to happen to the volumes? Well, 5 would be cubed, which is 125, and 6 cubed is 216. So that would be the ratio of the volumes. Okay? What if we're given the ratio of the volume and we have to figure out the area and the radius and diameters? Well, we always go back to the linear relationship. So let's take, since this is volume, we have to take the cube roots. Well, the cube root of 1 is 1, and the cube root of 8 is 2. So it's a 1 to 2 linear relationship, which makes it a 1 to, what, 4 area relationship. Okay, how about this one? 8 to, 20, to 50, but it is an area. Well, we can immediately see that's not going to square root very easily, but we can reduce that, can't we? to 4 to 25, and these are just ratios, so you can reduce these. So what's the ratio of the diameter and the radius? 2 to 5, which then becomes cubed 8 to 125. Okay, so I think you have the idea after going through the chart. Now let's put it into practice. A balloon has a radius of 6. Describe what happens to the 
balloon's volume if the balloon inflates and the radius changes to 12. Okay, so let's look at the radius. We have a 6 to 12 relationship. Well, what is that really? If we reduce that, that's just a 1 to 2 relationship. So what's going to happen to the, the surface area? Well, the surface area, all we do is square that ratio. So that means the surface area, the ratio is going to be 1 to what? 4, because we're going to square the 1 to 2. So that's what's going to happen to the ratio of the, the surface areas. It's going to be 4 times larger. Right? Okay, let's look at the second one. Describe what happens to the same balloon uh, volume if the radius is doubled. Okay, so again, we have the radius doubling. What's going to happen to the volume? Well, we've said 1 to 2. To get the volume, you would cube it, so it's going to be 1 to 8. So what is going to be 8 times larger, right? The big one's going to be the larger balloon's going to have a volume 8 times larger. Okay, so number 3, a sphere has a, ra a radius of 4. What happens to the volume if the radius is halved? Okay, so let's see, if the radius is 4 of the big one, and then it's half down to 2, what's that ratio? 2 to 1. We just reduce these by 2. So it's a 2 to 1, it's getting smaller. So what's going to happen to the volume? Let's see, let's cube them. The large one would be 8, the small one would be 1, so it's going to be 8 times, this time, smaller, because... It's getting smaller rather than larger, okay? Uh, a sphere has a radius of 8. What happens to the sphere's surface area if the radius is halved? Okay, so if the radius is 8, half of that would be 4. So what's the ratio there? Let's see, that's 2 to 1. It's a 2 to 1 relationship. So what happens to the surface area? Mm, surface area area, we square it. So it's 4 to 1. So it's going to be 4 times, what, smaller, because it's getting smaller. Okay, hope you're kind of catching on to those ratios. It shouldn't be too bad. Okay, let's look at the second page. We've just got a couple things to look at. Um, fill in the following table. The first one has been done for you. Okay, if the radius is doubled, that just means it's a 1 to 2 relationship. So it's going to be 1 to 4 and then 1 to 8, right? Hey, what if it's tripled? Okay, so that means it's a one to what relationship? One to three. If it's real, it's tripled. That would be one to. Well, let's square those nine, and then cubing one to three would be one to twenty-seven. Okay, what if it's halved? Okay, what does half look like? Half looks like two to one. It's getting smaller. So that's going to be squared would be four to one, and then. Uh, cubed would be 8 to 1. So what happens to the surface area? Oh, well, let's go back and we'll talk about this in a second. And if it's 4 times as big, okay? If it's 4 times bigger, that's a 1 to what? 4 relationship. So that would be 1 to 16 for the surface area. And then this would be 1 to what? 64. Okay, so let's go back and talk about what would happen. Okay, if it's tripled, the surface area would be 9 times larger. Okay, the volume would be 27 times larger. If it's halved, it's going to be 4 times smaller. And then the volume would be 8 times smaller. And then if it's multiply, if it's times 4, then it's going to be 16 times larger. And this one would be 64 times larger. Wow. Okay. Well, I hope these charts kind of help set up some of the word problems you're going to work on. And let me know if you have questions.